Hello, my name is Miro Flemke, and in this video, I want to show you how you can build anything you want with AI agents and automate your entire workflows. That means I will show you that today. We have a Telegram chat open here, and we will communicate with that now. And we will now simply retrieve important dates from my Google Calendar. That means we will start the workflow now. And now we're going to send a voice message. Hello, please list all important dates for me. We're going to send that off now and we'll get a response from the bot shortly. And now we have received a list of all important dates. And if you want to know how this works, even without programming skills, then stay tuned. In order to create these AI agents, we need a free account with N8N, which we will create here at N8N.io. That means we're going to sign up here with Get Started for free. And then we enter our name, our email, and then a desired password that we want to use, and we also assign a name for our workspace. In that case, I've already done all of this. That means I'm going to log in again so we can get in. So we are now logged in. We also see here that this is a free version that you can use, and we will first create a workflow. That means we click here on Create Workflow and just start from scratch. That means there's nothing in it. Everything will start today with a Telegram trigger. That means when someone sends a Telegram message to a Telegram bot, this entire workflow will start. That means we click here on Add First Step and then select Telegram here on Message. So now we just need to link everything with a Telegram account. That means you just need to connect the Telegram trigger with your Telegram account. That means we click on Create New Credential. Let's go into Telegram itself. So now we're in Telegram and we're searching for the contact our bot father. That means this bot father here with this verified icon. And now we can create a Telegram bot. That means we go to Start, then click on New Bot. Then we choose a name. Let's just call it iAgent. At Miro. Now we need to choose a username that has an underscore, for example, and ends with bot. This means that we now take I agent at Miro bot. So it's created now. Now we get this API key here. We'll just copy it with a left click. And now we go back to an 8n. So now that we've copied the key, we paste it in here. Click on save. You can see right away, it's also being tested to see if it's valid. And you can see connection tested successfully. That means we've now connected the new Telegram bot and can now set up triggers on messages. We're going to try this out very simply now. That means we're getting Telegram. Click here on Telegram slash the bot name. Now we select the Telegram trigger and click on test step. And then we click on start. And we can see right away on the right side, the text we sent is slash start. So it's already working. It receives the commands from Telegram. Now we want to set it up so that we can differentiate between voice messages and text messages. First, we will map the text messages. That means we use a filter for that. Or rather a switch in this case, because we want to switch. And um, now we select mode rules up here, and then we take the first input. That means text. We just pull this from the left here, drop it in there, and the string exists. And then it will be automatically forwarded to the output text. With that, we already have the first step, and you can see here that it worked. Of course, it automatically comes out as text. That means we're going to try this whole thing again with a voice message. We click here at the bottom on test workflow. We go into Telegram and now send one. And with that, we can see now it has definitely arrived here. Workflow executed successfully. It's also in the switch now. When we double click, we can see what came out of the Telegram trigger. And we see here is a new object in it called voice. That means we add a new routing rule. That means we're checking if the voice object is there. That means we pull this from left to right and check if the object exists. And if this object exists in the response from Telegram, we forward it to voice. That means we go to test step and we see Nothing comes out for text, but for voice. The message comes out. And now we're getting right into the nitty gritty for the voice message. We're now going to download this voice message from Telegram. 
That means we're using Telegram here. Get a file. Uh, we're using here file. Get get a file. We're pulling the file ID from the switch. Very important. Out here at file. Add the underscore ID. Select a download. Here test step, and you can see the whole thing has been downloaded as a file. Now we can move on and connect directly to OpenAI here, for example. And then we can directly take transcribe recording. That means we're going to transcribe this voice message that we sent to the bot into text. So that's how we did it. Resource audio transcribe. Recording. The data matches. And now we would connect everything with the OpenAI account where we get the API. And then we can click on test step here. Now, more, it has translated everything. And I just said test, test, test. As you can see, it worked. Now we continue with the AI agent. That means we're now adding the AI agent directly here. We have the tools agent here, and we can link a lot of things to it right away. And then we have the prompt here that then basically goes in there. We're going to do that differently now for the text message. That means we're using the formatter here again. Set edit fields, that's what it's called. We're using the edit fields from the field mapping. We're going to delete the workflow again. Of course, first listen for changes. So click on test workflow, or rather, now it doesn't work. We need to delete that first. Test workflow, now we're writing a message. List my appointments on January 25th, 2025. Zach, it arrived. Up to the edit field, it has definitely gone the right way. Now we can use the edit fields and map this text element exactly. We'll just call that text. And then we see this comes out as text. And now we can also set the AI agent up here or down here. It doesn't matter. We now have the text input here, which we can also connect here, of course. So it looks a bit strange. This way it's better. Then we select the chat model. Of course, you can also choose something else here. In this case, I'll take one OpenAI chat model. Of course, we connect the OpenAI account, which we already did earlier for the transcription. Let's just choose here. GPT-14. You could also take 4.0 mini. That's a bit cheaper, I would say. And then you've actually done quite a lot already. Of course, you also want it to remember something. That means we're going to add a memory here. So a memory, and we'll just take the window, buffer, memory. An easy way is, so now we need to define a key, basically a storage key to link this memory so that we don't connect everything with every message or multiple users, for example. That means we're now looking at the mapping first in the telegram trigger, because that's where it all starts, that we want to map this here. So is it letting us map this here? Not yet. Doesn't it let us define below? Because we want to define the key for this session ID ourselves. Let's go up here once, define below. And then we simply take the chat ID from the telegram trigger. So here under chat, we pull the ID into the key here. Then we can say, remember the last 50 messages from that. Super easy. And with that, the memory would be in place. And in the end, we can add another telegram message. That means send a chat message or text message. That's what it's called. Here we take the right bot again, send a message. Then we need the chat ID here, which we grab from the telegram trigger again, just like we did earlier for the memory. Got it. The text, we need to grab that as well from the result of the AI agent. Let's run that through right away. So that means we're going to do the test workflow here now. We're going into Telegram now and writing, hello, how are you? And then ChatGPT should respond in the background. Oh, that's not working yet because it doesn't function. So, ah, we also need to define the prompt. Define below, and we'll just call it text. So that means we should do it all over again now. Hello, how are you? You can see it works, and something should have come out now.
Exactly, we see here in the output, hello, I'm fine, thanks, how can I help you? And that's a response from ChatGPT. And we can, of course, send that back about the Telegram. Send. Text message. Got it. Send. Text message. We're selecting the chat ID from the trigger here, which will automatically retrieve itself from the appropriate chat. Then we select text here. Hey, I agent, put the output right in there. Then we can add additional fields here. Append. Attribution, we can turn that off so it doesn't show under every message that it comes from this workflow. Now we can delete that again, test workflow. And now we can say, hello, how are you? And we also see in the background, it's running, hello, I'm doing well, in response to, how can I help you? So now we're going to do the whole thing again with a voice message. That means we click on test workflow. We're going into Telegram, and now we're going to make a voice message. Hello, how are you? You can see it's being transcribed now. It goes through the AI agent and he says again, hello, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. This whole thing is currently in test mode, so we need to click on test workflow. Once we go live, you won't have to do that anymore. And the bot responds independently. Now we've built a chat GPT bot that doesn't really do much. He can just provide completely awesome answers, but he can't do anything productive with his own knowledge yet. We can do that in follow-up videos, but today I'll also show you how to retrieve calendar events from Google Calendar, for example. That means we now click on Tool, then on Plus, and then select the calendar. Here we click on Create New Credential, connect to our Google account where the calendar is stored, and then select Get Many under Operation. This means we want to retrieve many events from the calendar. And then we select the calendar from which we want to retrieve the events. Then we say we want a maximum of 50 events from today, from right now until today in a week. And that's actually already done for the tool. That means Gatol event is now here. Let's test the workflow. Again, we're making a Telegram voice message. List important dates from my calendar. We can see it's running, and soon it will also request the calendar here, or item. Yes. And now we see that we've received a lot of calendar events from Telegram. And you can search for specific appointments, and you can also see the location for each one. And you can go directly into Google Meet, for example. Or you can click on More Info and jump directly into the calendar to check it out. And, of course, you can do many more things there. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you want to know. And if you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, hi.